Hello, CPTI students. This is Dr. Robert O uh, saying hello to you through Zoom recording. I hope this will work uh, because Professor uh, Lee asked me to um, do a 30 minute lecture uh, 14 times while I'm in 14 day quarantine uh, so that you could watch it again and again and, and actually engage with me when I come in person to school um, in February. So let's start with prayer. Holy Spirit God, we ask for your wisdom and your spirit uh, understanding to come. Although uh, I'll be ministering in English, God, I pray that there'll be supernatural understanding. There'll be clarity in my words, Lord, so that they could grasp, get the idea and understand the concept so they could really help for them to understand and write well in academic papers, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in advance for what you'll do today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I prepared a PowerPoint, of course. It's always easier to use PowerPoint. Uh, I don't know where my PowerPoint went. Okay, here we go. Okay. There we go. Here we go. Okay. So I hope uh, as it's being recorded, and hopefully that I could just stay in the corner. Well, um, it's going to be a YouTube lecture, uh, be 14 segments. Today will be introduction and research and thesis writing steps, part one. So it's going to go on part one, part two, part three, depending on the time that I uh, I was spent and I, I, it's hard for me to uh, measure. So we're just going to continue uh, with that and hopefully, um, okay. So what is CPTI? Oh, let me do this again. CPTI, what is it or who is it? Uh, well, you Cambodia Presbyterian Theological Institute. Right? They have impressive buildings. I love those buildings. I think it's very artistically done. Um, wonderful, wonderful place. But to me, CPTI are you guys, <laughs> the students of all these years of learning, growing, and crying out for Cambodia. Souls will be saved and come into the the gathering of community of Christians, followers of Christ, and becoming all that uh, you are called by God to become. Wow. What is Cambodia Presbyterian Theological Institute? You are CPTI. <laughs> and, and that's the attitude I'm going to have when I'm invested in you by teaching these lessons that I'm not adding anything to hardware like building, but I'm adding more to the software, who you are. And hopefully that you'll be built up uh, through this learning and you become a better pastor, you become a better theologian, you become a better Christian, you become a better person. Uh, and hopefully that you will represent CPTI to the next generation of students. So who am I? Who is Dr. Robert O? Well, I am the one who rides Honda VTX 1300. <laughs> it's a large bike. I love my bike in America. I don't have that in here. I got my Honda, uh, Honda. I don't even have Honda Dream. I got Honda something. Uh, but I was born 1961 as a last child of five children. Um, so I'm 60 years old. This year, we went to America, 1973, home of 18 million people. So the LA County has more people than the entire country of Cambodia. So my home since 1973, uh, I was 12 years old when I immigrated. Um, and I was Korean, moved to America and become Korean American. What does Korean American mean? I'm Korean living in America, but my understanding and my culture and my language and my uh, who I am inside actually is I'm yellow outside, but white inside, go banana. 
as one of the terms that Hua Young, Professor Hua Young wrote in his book, Quest for an Authentic Asian Christian Theology. He said, are you mangoes or banana? Because mangoes are yellow outside, yellow inside. Or banana is a yellow outside, white inside. Well, I'm sort of banana, but I'm trying to become mangoes as much as possible. I was married 37 years ago, um, January 21st, 37 years ago, married um, happily. And I've been shaving my head, monk hairstyle. I've got my beautiful children, two ra beautiful rabbits. Um, and I don't know if you, these are actual rabbits, not dogs. <laughs> and uh, three grown-up children, and of course, married to an angel. <laughs> she has a ministry called Oasis House in Phnom Penh. It's a Christian counseling center. She raised up disciples, training, uh, and uh, launched a house where she does ministry, uh, counseling, teaching, uh, and equipping leaders, ministering to Korean missionaries, but primarily Khmer people. She's been doing a women's conference for many, many decades now uh, with Pastor Tang Bek Hong, Samoan, and we've been friends for many years. And so we're so thankful that God has allowed us to work with great Cambodian leaders. Uh, Pastor Tang Bek Hong and his wife are Wow, I met a lot of uh, Christian leaders, but they are <laughs> wonderful uh, national level leaders that I really admire and respect. In terms of my education, I uh, went to Berkeley, uh, study philosophy, 1979-84, got my degree in philosophy, and then went to Fuller Theological Seminary in 1986 to 1990. I got, I got my Master of Divinity. And then 1995 through 98, I got a Doctor of Ministry. Uh, and then went to Oxford, Middlesex University. Um, it's not part of the Oxford, but it's uh, Middlesex University campuses at Oxford. So we get to use Oxford libraries, access to Oxford professors, and it was wonderful. Uh, eight years of PhD process. I lived there two years uh, full time. Uh, my wife and uh, did my doctorate study on patron client relationship and published uh, so far uh, 60 books. Uh, it's quite a bit, quite a bit of books, but I got one of the calling in my life is to publish. So I've been faithful to that. Uh, we launched uh, seven years ago, now eight years ago, uh, August 15th, uh, Cambodia Research and Resource Center. And so as I uh, finish this book, the book that I wrote for your, your class. I have dedicated uh, this book to my friends at Cambodia Research and Resource Center because they really inspire me to research Cambodia. And they've been good friends and we've been doing a lot of conferences, big conferences and start publishing together. So this lecture series actually is, is in, through YouTube and you'll be under the category of CRRC lecture as CTPI uh, lecture one. Uh, well, let's get started then uh, with our actual teaching. Only 10 minute introduction is enough. And when I see you in person and I could entertain you more about uh, my personal journey and because it's it's not what you can teach, but who you are is more important as a professor. So I, I hope YouTube is one way to communicate, but in person will be better. So I'm just going to do a short introduction and then we could actually follow up on that. Well, let's get started. Uh, research and thesis writing step part one. Uh, research is very important in your life as a master level academia theologian, as a pastor, because Cambodia really needs a lot of the higher caliber or higher academic theologian who could really study for Cambodia. Not learning from other people, but self-generate Khmer uh, theology and Khmer uh, understanding of the Bible, Khmer uh, doctrines and 
because it's, it's so different. Every culture is so different. So I really pray that this uh, lecture would help you to get started, get started. It's just, it's not like uh, you'll be very vast. You'll be, a, you'll be a lot of information, but more than information, uh, let's get started with clapping. Paksu. <laughs> more than information, I, I want it to be more inspiration. Uh, you, did you like that? Okay, let me do that again. More than information, because we can get information everywhere. But I want it to be more inspiration and impartation. You know, I want you to get something and go, wow, you know, I, I need to research. I need to study. I need to do this for my country. I need to do this for kingdom of God. I need to do this because I'm followers of Jesus Christ. I, I pray that more inspiration will be given. Of course, this lecture was already taught at uh, Royal University of Phnom Penh, a Master of Arts in Philosophy. Research thesis writing steps because I am a professor uh, of philosophy there and I've been teaching since uh, 2017 uh, on the metaphysics of East and West. It's been a wonderful, wonderful journey uh, to work with uh, philosophy students at RUPP And these are my first cohort, uh, first set of students. Um, wonderful, wonderful students. We're still friends. We still meet together. Uh, we still have shared meals together. Uh, they were celebrating my birthday because my wife was gone and it was September and 2017. And they said, well, we'll give you a cake. So after cake, we went and had some Korean chicken legs celebration. It was wonderful. And I asked them, so what did you learn from me for last two months? <laughs> <laughs> so I taught them about what is nothing, um, relationship between Heidegger and uh, nothingness and Cambodian concept uh, of zero. So basically uh, that was the theme. And, and so I'm, I'll be actually unpacking that. I'll be explaining what that means to you. Because uh, Cambodia, the concept zero, uh, the number 605, right, um, was written. It's the oldest zero unit found in the world. So, of course, it's now in the showcase in World of Zero. It's in National Museum of Cambodia. If you go there, you must, you must go visit. Um, so, we, uh, out of that lecture or the teaching, Ung Sarat, Ung Sarat, uh, and Marino, uh, we compiled a book. I, they did their master thesis. Based on my teaching, they wrote their master thesis and, and were able to publish as a first English philosophy book in Cambodia. So I'm very, very proud and happy for them. Uh, and now it's sold at Amazon. Um, and you could buy all over the world. And recently we had a, a Zoom uh, meeting. Revolution. Listen in revolution, yes. So the need that I, I write in is about education 4.0. How we educate people in response to that context, to the IO 4.0. It's not about IT, it's not about the science. It's that's, not only that. That's part of it's your of book writing in 2023? Uh, uh, it's not. It's not the uh, the that books. It's just a, a research plan for me that I need. I, I, I wrote for for master degree in uh, Japan. Yes. Oh, you're getting a master in Japan now? No, not yet. I just applied. I'm in the processing of applied now. I pass uh, the second stage. It's oh. been that I, I can pass. Uh, yes, and then I will. Uh, it's yes. taught in Japanese uh, or English. Uh, in in Japan, in Japan, I know, Hiroshima right. University. Is it in English or Japanese? English, English. Yes. So uh, we're having Zoom meeting uh, now. I was in America. Uh, he was in Phnom Penh. Ung Sarat uh, now uh, works at a government education system, and he actually has a huge project. He's writing a book right now, and he'll be going to Japan for his second master's. Uh, and sister in Siem Rip also became a professor of university there. 
and we still gathered. It was last year, February. They came to our house. We're talking. We're sharing. Uh, and uh, she became a speaker at Philosophy Day of Cambodia, and now professor at Siem Reap. So we have a wonderful fellowship, Sarat, and we are now trying to co-author another book together about zeroness, finding zero in Cambodia. That's the tablet that 605 was written. He's there with his book proudly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's just a background of what uh, this research and thesis writing steps can do. Uh, using these steps, uh, we were able to really write a legitimate um, books on it. And so this was a result of that book. And even this book uh, the, that uh, you are, I'm going to send you in PDF uh, in this link. So you could kind of uh, take a look at it, but I'm going to ask school to make copy of this book. I couldn't bring the original, it's just too, too, too heavy. So I'm gonna give, uh, I'm gonna donate a few original to the school. And since I'm the author, I can make a copy of it and uh, everyone will receive one copy. And there'll be a reference point like pages, whatever will be based on this book. This book is also written because out of the three books that I wrote, uh, this by my lecture, I wrote a book on um, qualitative research method and also uh, my induction class uh, notes and cup and oil and a dependency issue. So uh, this book is a compilation, simpler form of uh, research. And of course, this book is too complicated uh, to go through in of the entire book. So I'm going to just point out a few things and maybe someday you read that. But for now, you just have to focus on what is research and how I'm going to write my master thesis. Of course, you would have to submit a paper. And I, I, I talked to Professor Lee and maybe 10 pages at the end of the term. Uh, and that's good, 10 pages is good. But the 10 page I hope will become foundational writing for your master thesis, which will be 70 pages or 70 to 80 pages. So there are 10 steps, okay, of, of my teaching today. Well, not my today, but maybe I'll just cover some part of part, uh, step one. Step one, what is your research question? That is the first step, step one. What is your research question? Do you know your research question? If you don't know your research question, you'll never get to do any research because you don't know what you're looking for, right? Very important, very, very foundational, very, very most important uh, um, beginning foundation of your research is what are you looking for? So if you don't understand that, then you're not going to do well in your research. What is your research question? You know, to come and formulate your research question. Um, believe it or not, for me, out of eight years, eight years of PhD uh, process, process, it took me, it took me two years, two years. <laughs> two years, two years. So to formulate my research, my research. For so every time I was at school, my professor would ask, so Bob, or Bob is in short for Robert in English. So they would call me Bob instead of calling me Dr. Robert O. They would say, hey, Bob. <laughs> so, Bob, what is your research question? And I'll say, well, what about this? I said, no, what about, what about this thing? What about that? And for two years, we went back and forth, I'll write, submit, no, yes, right, go back, two years. I, I'm not gonna do that to you, of course. And so uh, maybe if you're doing PhD, you may, but, uh, so, but it's important. From my personal experience as an example, now I'm not going to do anything that I have not done. Meaning it's not a theory, it's actually something that I've done. So that paragraph comes out of this book, page 23. And so I'm gonna send it to you through PDF. You could flip there, PDF, and don't print because it will cost money, but so you get this book hopefully before we begin the class. Um, but in there, I write research background. What is it you wish to research? Out of estimated 2,500 evangelical churches in Cambodia, only about 10 churches are financially independent. I would like to find out why 
this is the case and suggest possible solution to this problem. Now, that's my research question, isn't it? Why Cambodian churches are not becoming financially independent, okay? And there are three categories of your final paper. There are category one, there's a category two, and category three. I'm not giving you freedom to write whatever you want. And I, I did that at uh, RUPP, but uh, it did not do well. I think you need more, uh, what do you call it, uh, guidelines. So first category is creation story from Cambodian zeroness perspective. Because in Cambodian's understanding of nothing, soon is always something. So if soon, nothing is always something, when Christian teach about God's creation from nothing, my mind really cannot grasp what it means. So that would be one category you could actually write your thesis on. That'd be fantastic. I could really help you. I could invite Sarah to actually coach you on that or give you this book so you could read and then respond. Uh, it's wonderful. The second category is patron-client relationship in church planting in Cambodia. So I wrote the whole book on patron-client. Patron-client in Korean word is kap enul. So now it's published through England, Regnum Publishing House. So you could actually use this as a launching pad for that. Or a dependency issue in Cambodia. Well, for that, you have this book that you could refer to. Uh, why is Cambodia a dependent? But, so we could then um, focus. How, how do we go about doing that? For example, uh, very simple, but it looks complex, but let me explain. How do I come up with research question? You start with broad topic, big topic. For example, here, global warming. So when you think about global warming, uh, that's just broad topic. Global warming is a huge, huge topic. Then you have focus idea, impact, on world health, not global warming per se, about animal dying, you know, the ice melting and white polar bear, you know, disappearing. No, no, impact on world health, WHO, World Health Organization. So impact on world health will be more focus idea. And then out of the focus idea of impact on world health, there will be general question on therapy. For example, what is the role of WHO World Health Organization in response to increasing diseases. Hmm, that's interesting. What about the second? What should the government do to prepare for increased disease? That's a very good question. Third, how will climate change increase health risk for people worldwide? So instead of three answering the three research question, this person out of the general question chose this, how will climate change increase health risk for the people worldwide? And then that leads to more specific question. Number one, what climate change are expected? Second, what diseases are most sensitive to climate change? Third, what areas of the world are most at risk? Fourth, what statistics are there to prove that health risks are increasing? You see, it's, it's uh, simple, but you could ask in that progression. Start with general, broad, focus idea. Out of the focus idea, you could ask general question. Out of the general question, you choose one. Out of that general question that you could ask specific question. That's how research questions are made. So let me explain this way. More broad topic. So you got many, many broad topics, right? For example, then you start with focus idea. And then from there, out of the focus ideas, you got general questions and you choose one general questions and then out of the questions that you have specific questions. That's the flow, okay? From large concept, general question, large concept, you choose a specific idea. Out of the specific idea, you got a lot of general question. Out of the general question, you ask, you choose one general question. Out of that, you have more specific questions. What about in CPTI context? 
how are we going to go get to? Well, I told you, you'll be working with three categories in CPTI research. Yeah, there are many more, but because I'm teaching and I want to know in these three areas, because I'm expertise in that, I could grade you, I could coach you, I could help you better. So it's actually for you. For example, you could choose out of the three, but let's say, for example, that we chose a dependency issue in Cambodia as your category. So broad topic is what? A dependency issue in Cambodia. That's the broad topic. So what's the focus idea? Well, it, when you talk about a dependency issue, number one, it could be government A dependency, not descend, <laughs> government A dependency issue China. That could be an issue or NGO funding more than 90, 50% of GDP, that could be an issue. Or focus idea would be my question, estimated of 2,500 evangelical churches, how come only 10 churches are financially independent? So out of the broad topic of aid dependency, out of three general questions, you are going to now focus on idea of church not being independent. So focus on idea on aid dependency of churches, there could be more issues like poverty issue, lack of training issue, or tithing issue is people in Cambodia tithing give 10% of their income to the Lord. And you, uh, you choose to talk about tithing issue. Then out of the tithing issue, the more specific question, what about Batambang? What about Phnom Penh? Is it poor area versus city different? Is it older church different that is uh, supported by foreigners versus Khmer church is different. So all kind of specific question you could raise, right? And out of that, I also came up with my research question. Okay, so don't worry. I know it sounds, oh my Lord, it's confusing. <laughs> it is very confusing. It is confusing because you're learning through YouTube right now, through Zoom recording. Uh, if I'm in person, uh, you could ask question and do all that. So hopefully. So yeah, all that you're doing right now, just watch it maybe twice, three times. If you don't get it, read it, read my book, watch it, and then write down questions and for face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meeting coming soon. So do not worry, I'll work with you with your research question. Trust me, it's not gonna take you two years to come up with <laughs> a research question. Hope not, uh, your program will be over. And so, but within the short uh, time that we're going to spend, I think we're going to spend two weeks together. Um, so you, you will come up with your research question. And the second would be do your literature review. So that I think we'll do at the next uh, segment because uh, it's already 30 minutes past, almost 28 minutes. So, so relax, chill, enjoy. Um, uh, the key is to really write a note while you're taking note. And so the homework uh, for this session and the homework will continue uh, is uh, simple. This YouTube teaching 30 minutes, go to your laptop, open up document and write out uh, research. Title is research and thesis writing steps and write down all these steps, step one, two, just like that and then write in all the key points I made. Did you get that? Okay, that's your homework uh, for this segment. So there'll be 14 homeworks. Okay, and, and I expect you to bring that to class uh, when uh, we're meeting. And then you should have good, maybe you know, 10 page outline on this particular. And then you could use that actually for your uh, my, pay, my paper, the paper I will require from you, 10 pages, and then that could become a basis for your long-term master thesis. So it's going to really help you to write your thesis. Amen. All right. Well, Lord bless you. May his revelation be upon you. Holy Spirit, God, come and anoint them that they can do well, Lord God. And, and, and they will learn something and they are going to Mm, become a better pastor, better theologian, better disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you at lecture two.